Okay, so I know what you're saying. Hey, Mike, you need another car in your driveway, right? No, I didn't but I, I got this one. Um, actually, this is one that before I even had the Ranchero, I agreed to buy it from a friend of mine. Um, the story on it is he got it from the original, the f original family, the original owner, um, and she was like a Holocaust survivor, and she lived in the Central Valley up in Merced uh, for the rest of her life, and she bought this car new in 1971, and I believe she passed around uh, 2013. That's when the car was parked. Uh, but it's a 1971 Dodge Coronet sedan. It's a Coronet Custom. It's not a police package, but it does have a 383 big block, which is kind of rare on these. Most of these were 318 cars. In fact, I used to have a Plymouth Satellite, a 73, that was the same body. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with these cars. So I agreed to take it, and I was going to see what I was going to do, and then I was toying with the idea of maybe selling off my Cougar, which is like way over there somewhere. Um, and keeping this one, uh, but then another friend of mine who's actually friends, mutual friends, also with the, with the other friend of mine uh, who lives locally, he lives just down in Alhambra. Um, he said, he said, hey, I really like that car. Um, and actually, he'd actually said that to my friend who sold me the car, but then he never actually like backed up and said, hey, I want to buy it. So now he wants it. So. I was like, okay, I really don't need it, so I'm probably going to be selling him the car, so I'm just kind of waiting on that. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm not registering the car because in California, it's like ridiculously expensive to register a car just to turn around and resell it again. And we're not going to drive the car because I'm in Pasadena, California. I'm not one of these YouTubers that lives out in the middle of nowhere where you can drive a car with expired tags. Here, the police will actually pull you over for that and uh, and they'll impound it. So I'm just gonna show you the car today in the driveway. If my friend gets it, I'll probably be helping him out. So I'll be showing him uh, doing videos with him, uh, 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 doing some work, because it does need a few little things here and there as other, most old cars do. But for now, let's go check this one out. So one thing I really like about 1971 cars is it's before they went to the crazy safety bumpers that the federal government made them put on thanks to Ralph Nader. And this one's actually got this cool uh, vintage blue personalized plate. This is Ursula. So this car is called Ursula now. That was actually the name of the original owner. And uh, my friend actually got the sign off. Uh, for the plates, so we keep the either my friend's probably going to keep the uh, well, actually, I think he's definitely going to keep these plates because they're really cool and they they kind of contribute to the story of the car. Um, it's really a just a nice California car, no real rust on it. Uh, it was a vinyl top car, and fortunately, the vinyl top is gone, which which probably saved the roof because uh, as you've seen in a lot of my videos, especially the junk air videos, that's where stuff tends to rust. This isn't rust, this is just like a little bit of crustiness from the old vinyl top. But uh, it does need a little bit of filler here where the seam is. You can see that's where they, they'd filled the seam, put the top over it. So, but this will all clean up and you could put a vinyl top over it or you could sand it down, maybe fill it up and then one idea uh, that, that uh, my friend had was to paint it with uh, like a bed liner and you, it would actually look like a vinyl top from a distance. This door does not work. So there's actually a rod. Uh, I've seen it happen on these 70s Mopars before. There's like, you gotta, you gotta open up the door, take the door panel off, but you can fix that. Um, so you gotta go through the back door and then hit this one or come in through the uh, passenger side. So the inside one does work. This one's a remote mirror car. So it has the remote mirror and roll-up windows. The door panels are in good shape. You can see the seats don't match. From what I understand, the, the lady had a thing about things not matching, so she had the front seat redone not to match the back seat. So that is a little odd, but uh, it's kind of cool. And you can see it's got one of those 80s third brake light kits that uh, they used to sell like at the auto parts store back in the day. And one of those has been added to the back. Um, Let's have a look in here. It's even got the custom dash mat that says Urzola to match the uh, license plate. See, the dash is in really good shape. And actually, in the glove box, it has the original Coronet Charger uh, owner's mail from 1971. So it makes it worth more because it's, it's like a charger, if you know what I mean. Yeah, right. Um, so it's the original AM radio. I tried it. It turns on, but the... Uh, it doesn't change stations. You can push the buttons and change the station, but I think it's set the radio stations up in the Central Valley, so it's not quite matching with the stations here in L.A. 
Uh, ashtray doesn't look like it's really been smoked in. You can usually tell by the lighter if you pull the lighter. Um, yeah, it's been used a few times. So somebody has smoked in here. It doesn't smell like cigarette smoke in here though. But uh, yeah, you always check that. If the lighter looks brand new, it's, it hasn't been smoked in. But we'll show you the odometer here. So it's 59,629 miles. So it's a low mile car uh, that is masking the crack in the dash. Um, but overall, I mean, the headliner, they still have their garage door opener in here. Um, headliner's in good shape. These had the weird seat belts in the early 70s where you had to like click the uh, shoulder harness um, after. You had to clip the shoulder harness after uh, you you did the lap belt. So most people just ran lap belts. And then a few years later, they started going with the retractable one that would come down with the lap belt part, like, like you know in cars today. This is actually an air-conditioned car. I haven't tried it. My friend says it worked, but it didn't work that great. So I'll just take his word for it. I haven't unwrapped the steering wheel to see if the plastic's good, but the this part of the steering wheel, the stuff I can see is actually in good shape. Um, let's see, we're gonna come around the back. Glass is all in good shape. You can see this is usually where they where cars rust out, especially with vinyl tops. This one's not, it's a little bit here. This could probably be sanded. It's not bad, uh, mostly because the top probably went, you know, bye-bye uh, early enough where it didn't trap too much stuff under there to, to rot things out. So coming around the back, and the back end, like I said, this was like pre-safety bumpers. So the bumpers are actually kind of cool on these. Whereas a few years later, it had all the, the big girder bumpers on it with the rubber thing sticking out. Um, the trunk is very old lady. So I uh, can see this looks like it was painted silver at one time. Because the trunk's actually silver. It still has the jack instructions on it. it. Might just be the trunk lid that was replaced and maybe they painted it or something. It's got a cane and it's typical like old lady stuff. Power steering fluid, brake fluid. Uh, here's a little uh, pry bar. Who knows what that was for? Maybe she was breaking into cars in her off time. Um, let's see here. Uh, got this weird sleeve thing. Maybe it's for your knee or for a sleeve. I don't know. Uh, old set of jumper cables. Some old uh, shopping bags. A couple cans of spray paint for... And she's out tagging, an old lady, old lady uh, tagging, yeah, right. Uh, cushion from the couch, uh, bottle, actually we figured out this was lead substitute. Now, you know, for, for, cause this would have been a leaded fuel car, this is pre-catalytic converter. Um, an old cooler and a seating cushion for sitting in the car. That's, that's definitely an old lady thing. So, total, total old lady stuff still in the car uh, here. And I'm going to run you down the uh, passenger side. This, unfortunately, I guess she got in a little accident or something. So, the quarter kind of got pushed up a little bit. But it's still fixable. It's not rusted. It's just it kind of got pushed up. The tires are completely destroyed. That's another thing is before this thing could really be taken up to any decent speeds, those tires are gonna have to be replaced. Um, I would not trust those like on the freeway or anything like that, because they are definitely older. As I said, this car was last tagged in 2013. So, and even on this side, the uh, vinyl top isn't too bad. A little bit here, nothing terrible. Um, these doors open fine. As you can see, I'll show you a good shot of the back seat. This is actually the piece of trim for the uh, fender, which you'll see in a second is missing. Uh, the back seat probably needs to be done as well. Maybe it could be done to match the front seat, which is looks like that was done later because well, actually this has a little bit of rip in it too. But uh, overall, I mean, just a typical low mileage car, 59,000 miles. And this fender, you can see it's got some rippling, it's missing the badges. Uh, and the trim, like I said, there's a piece in the, but my friend found a piece and it's in the back seat. Unfortunately, there was one of these at pick apart. It's in one of my junkyard videos. There was one of these out there. It was, it was a 73 or 74, but some of the stuff would have been interchangeable, like the badges and the trim. And that was months ago. And of course it's long gone and it's missing the, uh, second D in Dodge. 
So it's a Doge, like the coin that everyone buys. So instead of investing in Doge coin, I'm investing in Doge car, I guess. Uh, let's see, we gotta pop the hood on this guy. All right, so I got the hood to finally pop on this guy. I actually had to do the old, uh, you know, where you hammer down on the, where you just bang on, where you just hit, hit it with a tap and it popped uh, after I pulled on the lever a few times. See, it's a little dirty. It's a 383 uh, big block with air conditioning, you know, power everything, power brake, power steering. Uh, battery's a little old, but it still cranks okay. Sometimes the starter makes, you know, like it's going out, but... I uh, did that when I first got it a couple times, but it hasn't done it since. So let's go in here. We're going to start this. This actually car has been starting up pretty good. Um, it still smells like old gas. Forgot the door didn't work right. I haven't spent enough time with this car. But here, I'll just stick the key and I'll turn it without pumping it. I did pull it back in the driveway. So you can see here, it's just fire right up. Let's go have a look. But it's running good. So like I said, nice little 383 big block. Unfortunately, like I said, I cannot take this anywhere because of uh, the expired tags. Since they actually do care about those kind of things in California. Um, and uh, I really don't want to get this car impounded because it'll cost me a lot of money to get it out of impound. So, but it's a decent car. My buddy's supposed to be getting it and I'm sure he'll give it a good loving home. All right, so that's gonna wrap things up for this week's video on the 1971 Dodge Coronet. Unfortunately, it's most likely not staying with me. It's gonna be going to my friend, but I'll be helping him work on it. So I'm sure you'll be seeing it in future videos. Uh, I've got videos coming up of other projects, including the Ranchero, which I need to get back to. I'm going to a scooter rally with my 62 Vespa this weekend. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna try to shoot some video there. Um, so we got lots of content coming your way. So until next time, I'll be seeing you.